Goal 1 of the MDGs, which seeks to eradicate extreme poverty and hunger, is in tandem with the vision of making poverty history in Ekiti State, as envisioned by Governor John Kayode Fayemi. It focuses on all efforts geared towards reducing the number of people who live in extreme poverty, which generally means living on less than $1 per day. According to the new poverty estimates from the World Bank, the proportion of people living on less than $1 a day has reduced significantly, almost by half, since the adoption of the MDGs. It is projected that 40% of people living on extreme poverty will be located in the Sub-Saharan Africa and Southern Asia. To ensure that Ekiti people do not form part of the statistics on extremely poor people in Nigeria and indeed the world by 2015, the Dr. Kayade Fayemi led administration is committed to combating abject poverty through the eight point agenda. The overriding vision of this administration is to make poverty history through the creation of wealth opportunities in our state. Education is the key that unlock the poverty situation in our environment and that by providing adequate health care at the primary level, we also prevent our people from becoming susceptible to the opportunistic diseases that easily kill. You cannot have an anti-poverty strategy that does not focus on people. You have to put people first if you're talking about an anti-poverty strategy. And if you look at the various components of our population, we have roughly 5% of our population in that age bracket of 65 and above. We have another uh, 5% in the uh, 5 category. And then we have the bulk of our population under 25. It, for all of these segments, we have programs and policies that directly focused at protecting them and providing social safety nets for them. There are youth empowerment scheme, our volunteer course scheme that provides jobs, or even if on a temporary basis, for those who have not been able to access the job market, but have the necessary requisite skills to add value to society. You have that. Even in poverty, there is relativity. There is absolute poverty uh, of people who cannot even eke out a living, people who cannot even afford a meal a day. So when we say we do food bank, for example, in a kitty, in all the local governments we do food bank in which we provide food items for people who just do not have any means of livelihood. Uh, they are hard done by and we we, 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 we provide a stop gap for them. We've moved on from food bank in the various local governments now to having soup kitchen. So that deals with the extremely poor. And then you come to the category of the people who benefit from our social security benefit scheme. These are elderly who are not already on pension and who don't have those 
who are looking after them, either in the form of their children or their relatives. Again, that's a significant portion. The entire people who fall into that category, the bulk of them, are now under the government social safety net. These are people who would ordinarily not just be classified as poorest of the poor, but now they not only have the stipend that government gives them, that stipend circulates averagely every month we spend a hundred million on those who benefit from the social security scheme. The most relevant of the agenda items are governance, modernizing agriculture, infrastructural development, gender equality and empowerment, industrial development and human capital development. Consequently, government is investing in initiatives such as social security scheme for the elderly, the youth in agriculture development YCAD, revival of cocoa plantations, and agribusiness. On the eight point agenda, we're, we're looking basically as transiting agriculture from the subsistence way of doing it to a more modernized, technologically backed agriculture operation in Nikiti State. We're looking specifically at using agriculture as a platform to create employment, to engage people in Nikiti State, most especially youth. Uh, also, we're looking at agriculture, using agriculture as a, as a driver for internally generated revenue. So if you look at all these, you will see that uh, this current administration is putting a lot of effort in terms of time resources, planning, in terms of uh, um, uh, uh, fund into agriculture to drive the economy of a state. state. Uh, uh, like I mentioned earlier on, um, youth is very critical for us, youth employment. And uh, when this administration was coming on board, one of the things that we, 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 we agreed to do is to use agriculture to drive youth employment, to engage youth. Uh, people always say that uh, youth will not be interested in agriculture. But one thing we have found out that with proper planning on what we have, we have done in the Kitty State, youth are getting incentivized into agriculture. We have set up a program that we, uh, that we tag Youth in Commercial Agri Development Program, uh, that which most people call YCAD. Uh, what that program is aimed at achieving is to create a platform for youth to have a seamless access into agri business, to operating agricultural businesses, commercial agricultural production on arable on uh, uh, rice production, on uh, uh, cassava production, that's on the Haribo side. In terms of the tree crop side, on cocoa, on oil palm, to be able to stabilize their operation uh, with that regard and have it, like I use the word, a seamless flow. White card is a program that is being organized for youth for commercial purposes. So the idea is to brood young, vibrant people that can manage little portion of whatever they were being given to, to start with and eventually grow, develop into whatever capacity that they can accommodate. And initially, we were being granted 1.4 million each. Actually, we were not given the money on raw cash. It was um, it was designed in a way to make sure that well, the the um, the Ministry of Agri we supply the input. They will prepare the land for us. They will give us cassava stems to plant, and which they did. And we are the one that is now supervising both the planting, the spraying, and the management of our farm. By and large, I got my first 
perfect like just like I've said earlier at the farm settlement and from there I moved to Okiaku to take another five hectares and um, because we started late last year we were unable to um, uh, go beyond some of us we were, not, we were unable to go beyond that 10 hectares we have been able to acquire a, a land of 157 hectares at Iriki of which 50 of that land, 50 hectares of that land has been already been planted with oil palm. We have already acquired that and that is what we are doing presently. We have been able to clear up to about 35 hectares of, of that oil palm. And we have today we have been able to plant um, about 20 hectares, al al almost 20 hectares of um, maize in that place. I mean at you. We have been able to record several, so many successes. As I'm talking to you, in two weeks' time, my, my cassava farm land will be going to 20 hectares. I'll be completing about 20 hectares of cassava. All the inputs, the cassava stems, the uh, chemicals were given to us. Other areas of investment include forestry, youth empowerment through volunteer cop scheme, the conditional cash transfer to indigent women with young children, microcredit scheme for women and other members of the society, health and education initiatives to foster productive employment, encouragement of private investments among Cutting others. into half the number of poor people. That's the first I get in a city state, in the nation, in the whole world, cutting by, cutting by half. But for us, it's even beyond that. We will barely have extremely poor people in a city. By the time uh, all the efforts begin to yield fruit. Because we all know that if it is a civil service state, so we have the figure out of it people who, who are resident in Ikise that are on the payroll of government. Those ones are not, that they can be categorized amongst the extremely poor people. Then you have the beneficiaries of the social security, about 20,000. You have beneficiaries of the youth in agriculture program and not only that in agriculture in the agriculture uh, sector there are also some other initiatives trying to revive our cocoa plantations you know trying to revive so many things trying to have the value chain you know the full value chain agriculture value chain for some of our crops that's where you have you know uh, collaboration with other some organizations, PPP arrangements to ensure that, for instance, we have the full value chain for cocoa, for cassava, for instance. And those are, there are farmers in those different areas. People who are regions that are focused on, you know, some particular crops. When you add the figures, of the different beneficiaries from the different interventions you will see that we would we will barely have extremely poor people in Ikisi by the time uh, all the efforts begin to yield fruit we have our conditional uh, cash transfer program of MDGs that will be you know trying well that will empower 2250 equity women give them five thousand naira per month and then at the end of one year give them a hundred thousand to start an agri related venture which means in those families as well extreme poverty will become a thing of the past okay and you have 
so many recruitments going on you have so many intervention uh, pr programs you have so many strategies in different sectors that will enable uh, our people have access to the basic the minimum that will enable them feed Similarly, there are programs to enhance skills acquisition and economic empowerment as well as enterprise development in the state, especially among young women and men. We are initially set up to encourage, promote and coordinate investment activities in the state with a view of smoothing economic growth for the state. We also serve as a veritable platform between the state government and the university public. We are also set up to improve the quality of life of citizens of the state through wealth creation, job opportunities, and also to put smile on the uh, indigenous who hitherto prefer to go to a white collar job. But here, yeah, through the introduction of uh, SMEs and empowerment of SMEs, we believe that the Ekiti state can become a class of labor. They can be creating, creating wealth for themselves, and that is the main purpose why this agency. Um, was set up. Last year, Mr. Governor uh, empower and then commission the first set of the Trisacro Empowerment Scheme, which was 200 uh, Trisacro Scheme. And today, he's doing wonders of good. We're doing a conjunction with the equity in a private investor from, from Lagos. And also, not only that, uh, yes, he's going to push the effect of asset in the wider Radio Canada. This is going to help people to be able to have money. Okay, because we're talking about creating wealth. I mean, each of them now, on the average, each of every stack has to make smile on every day with about 5,000 naira. And one will have to pay every day, it's like 1,000. So you need to take 5,000, but 5,000 by 24 working days. Like, as soon as they work 24 days in a, in a, in a that's about 150,000, which is enough for, for any, anybody. And today, the Ski Actors Centre and also Commerce have graduated the first phase of, uh, of, of, that, of that scheme. We have graduated over 200 young entities who were trained in various professions such as uh, metal, uh, metal fabrication and rewinding, uh, electrical repairs, uh, fashion designing, hotel and event management, computer hardware and telephone repairs, uh, event management, carpentry and joinery, artwork and uh, painting. We have trained them, about 220 of them. And after the training, we have governor for the five in great justice, approved financial empowerment scheme for them. I gave them about 20 million naira, all of them, to start up their business. And I can tell you today, 50% of them are doing very well in their business flow. In fact, about 40% of them are now employers of labor, employing an average of about five people at direct labor, working, working under them today. In actual sense, I call myself 
youth enterprise ambassador. And I was empowered to the enterprise development agency either. It was over the radio. I heard that the state government was actually inviting graduates who are interested in uh, entrepreneurship. So I took the form and uh, and that was it. There was there was a test that was conducted then at the Christ School. I wrote the test and I was called for the interview. That was how I was shortlisted. We had a three month training. It gave me the background I needed to go into uh, business uh, uh, venture. So when you want to talk about micro enterprise that have this kind of uh, this kind of employment uh, uh, opportunity for youth and and, uh, and uh, that supports enterprise like this. I want to say we are not doing too bad. Presently, presently here now we have uh, we have a nine working with us. Yeah. I want to say that for a micro enterprise that is fine. Yeah. At the Adebayo Mill we have uh, we have. Uh, people working there. But the truth of the matter is most of the time because of the economic situation we work more with contract people who will pay wages and if I want to look at that I can say that maybe the staff spent is around 20. stimulating economic self-reliance and growth. And we have evidence, Madam SSAP, here in Ekiti, that when you give this sort of investment, the 100,000 Naira that we're giving to each woman, uh, woman at the end of this scheme, I can almost say to you that the repayment rate is going to be 100%. Our evidence in Ekiti shows that when you lend money to women, they almost always pay back much more consistently than when you lend it to men. You know that when you lend it to men, we will, we will cut some corners along the way, drink some shekwe, marry some women, and then eventually find a way to declare it a bad debt. But women don't declare bad debt, and I'm sure that the deputy managing director here will confirm that from their own repayment package in uh, Echo Bank. So, this is not just a charity business, it makes extreme economic sense to do what we are doing. And it is on this note that on behalf of the government and honourable people of Ekiti State, Nigeria, and on behalf of the MDG's office as well, I am pleased to launch the 2012 Conditional Cash Transfer Scheme to the glory of God and the benefit of all our women here in Ekiti and their entire households. Excellencies, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, by the grace of God, poverty is becoming history in the land of honor, Ekiti State, Nigeria. The good work continues. The light endures. Just keep faith. I thank you all for your attention.
thank you for watching Transformation 360 Degrees. We hope you have been more enlightened about Ekiti MDG's office. We do hope you'll keep a date with us next time. Ekiti MDG's office is the Southwest Regional Office of Nigeria's Millennium Development Goals. You can contact us at First Floor Mutual House, Okesha Road by Governor's Office at Do Ekiti, or email us at mdgs at ekitistate.gov.ng or our Facebook page, Ekiti MDG's office, or our Twitter handle at AKT MDG's office. You can also visit our website www.aktmdgs.gov.ng.